Welcome to the next section of our test project course. And in this section, we'll be talking about mobile automation testing for iOS application. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to the next video of Test Project Course. And in this video, we'll be talking about introduction, configuration and quick run of a simple test in iOS device. Test project for iOS mobile application automation can be done for both native as well as hybrid application type. And once again, hybrid application type support is not officially supported by Test Project team, but we can still execute the test as we did in our Android section of this course. Before actually configuring physical device with your test project, as it requires a lot of restrictions, I'm going to show you how the architecture of test project looks like while it's executing a test on your physical device. Basically, the test project will have a test project cloud that we do from the web browser. And the cloud actually has all the web apps and servers to communicate with the test project agent, which is installed within our local machine. The local machine here can be a Windows machine or it can be a Mac operating system. In this case, I have a local machine as a Mac operating system. And in this section, I'll also show you how you can execute test on a iOS device from Windows operating system. But as of now, I'm going to show you how you can run the test on a Mac operating system. So this test agent and then this test agent is going to take the request from the test project cloud via HTTPS and then it is going to initiate the test on the connected devices. So this test project agent knows which device is connected to itself and test project agent is going to install a test project application within your physical device. Again, it's a customized web driver agent which is maintained by Facebook and test project team has written so many different features and functionalities wrapped around the web driver agent to make testing more easier and better than compared to the actual web driver agent itself. So this web driver agent then helps you to communicate with the actual application under test by taking all the requests from the test project agent. So this is how the architecture of the test project looks like while executing a test in a much higher level. As you can see here, the test project agent is actually installing a customized web driver agent which is nothing but the test project application within your iOS device. But iOS devices by itself has so many restriction to install an application within a physical device. And that's why there requires a lot of configuration which is not something available in the Android device. Because in Android device while we were trying to execute a test on a physical device we did not really see any installation happened on the Android device even in the physical device as well as the simulators. But here since test project is installing a test project application within your iOS device, it still requires a lot of configuration. So configuring your Apple iPhone device with the test project portal is not as straightforward as Android device due to the security restriction with Apple devices. Again, these are the same restriction applicable in Appium as well while you try to run the test on a real device. Here are the following prerequisites you need to have during the configuration. The first thing, as you can see on the right hand side, this is the settings that you can see from your profile where you have an option called iOS. And here you need to input your Apple team ID. Again, this Apple team ID is nothing but your developer ID. So you should have an active Apple developer account. And once again, this Apple developer account is, is going to cost you 99 USD so you should have that and once again I actually got one from test project team they helped me to get this Apple team ID and they helped me to generate certificates and provisioning profile and that's why I actually could able to run the test on a real Apple device but while you need to run the test and real Apple device you should actually have these device certificate as well as the provisioning profile so that you can actually run the test on an Apple device. So this is kind of downside, but I won't see it's a downside. It's actually a restriction which is brought from the Apple itself. So 
if you're going to run the test on a test device, you should have all these Apple Developer account so that you can run the test on the physical device. So the active Apple Developer account will help you to get the device certificate as well as the provisioning profile. And you can get the CSR file from the test project portal and generate the file to get the device certificates and provisioning profile. So in a nutshell, all you have to do is this. You need to have an active Apple team ID or the Apple developer account. And then with the developer account in here as an input, you can generate a certificate signing request or CSR. You can also generate this from the keychain access of macOS or you can do it from here. This is a very simple option which Test Brother has provided it for you. And once you get the CSR, you can go to the Apple developer account and then you can upload the CSR file to generate the device certificate as well as the provisioning profile as you can see here. And then you need to upload the device certificate as well as the provisioning profile so that you can see that your device will be available for you to communicate with test project portal. So this is the configuration part. This is kind of a painful part than compared to Android, but still this is the way that you can actually do so the test project agent can communicate with a real device. So this is the configuration prerequisite of the iOS device itself. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. And once again, I'm not going to show you how you can configure that by generating the certificates and provisioning profiles. As I said before, I don't really have a developer account. And again, these are pretty straightforward. If you still have an Apple account, you can easily generate device certificate as well as provisioning profile using the CSR file, which you can obtain from the test project portal. I'll quickly show you how you can run a very simple test using a physical device. So for that, I'm going to flip to my test project account. All right, so this is my Chrome browser, and then I'm going to navigate to the testproject.io, and I'm going to sign in. And I guess I have not started the test project agent, so let me open that. All right, as you can see, the test project agent is currently starting. And once again, I have downloaded the test project agent from the agents tab that we discussed before. So if you go to the agents, you can see there is a Mac. So you can just select that so that it can download the agent for you. And it has currently been installed. And you can see that it is currently running in my Mac operating system. So now you can see that the agent is currently running. And I have also configured the agent as we did in our previous video. So if I go to the agents tab here, you can see that I have my test agent of the Mac operating system and it is currently in idle state. So if I open this, you can see that it has all the informations like it has a browser of Chrome and Safari and it is available here. And you can see that the test project agent I got has version of 0.41.26 whereas for my Windows, agent that we were discussing until last video was 0.42. So this is the newer version. This is kind of older version, but still it works pretty fine as, as we were expecting. And now if I go to the devices tab here, since I have already registered my iPhone, you can see that this particular iPhone device appears here. And you can see that it is currently being authorized as well. And now if I want to see my Apple device, I can just click this view device as I did pretty much like how we did in the Android. And you can see that it is currently connecting to my actual device. And this way, if you're going to start for the first time, it is going to install the test project application within your iPhone device. It will take a little time for the first time because it is going to install the test project application within my device. I guess it has installed. I can see in my physical device now. There you go. So this is my beautiful iPhone X device. And you can see that it is going to be performing pretty much like how we did with the Android device as well. So if I do a swipe, you can see it is currently swiping here, which is cool. And you can see that this is working pretty much like how we did with the Android device. Fantastic. So this is how the iPhone device can be connected. I'm just going to close this guy. I'm going to go to the home tab and I have actually created a very super simple recording for running the test on the iOS device for the iOS test. And you can see this is the one 
and I'm going to quickly run this test for you and I will show you how it actually works. So I'm just going to hit this start recording button so that it can launch the device for me. I'm going to click that guy. There you go. You can see it is pretty faster than before because the test project application has already been installed there and you can see that it is automatically opening YouTube application for me. There you go. And now if I try to run this test over here, you can see that it is going to execute the test for me and whatever that I have input is actually happening. So you can click, you can see that it is clicking the trending subscription inbox and then it's going to enter some value for me there. There you go. That's it. So this is how the test will be executing. So you can see that it's currently working and even if I hover to these options, you can see these options are coming as a XUI element. Again, with Android, it was Android element and here it's all XUI element, right? That's how iOS operating system actually recognizes all these elements, right? So this is how everything works in the iPhone world and with the Mac OS world. In our next video, I will quickly show you how you can do a super simple recording and also followed by that, we'll see how we can work with these kinds of element, pretty much like how we did with the Android and we'll understand how things work. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.